Hey family, this is Kathy. Welcome back to the Salt and Light channel. I have another word for you from the Lord, and this is part five of our Uncommon Provision series. Uncommon Provision. And the title of this message is Water to Wine at a Wedding. Water to Wine at a Wedding. And we know the word uncommon means it's like it's not common. It's not things that you would normally see in your everyday life. And through this Uncommon Provision series, the Lord is wanting you to look for ways of uncommon provision that He's going to bless you, teach you, uh, anoint you, break you, set you, through, set you free, and bring you through to deliverance. But not just you, your family and those attached to you. Because the Lord is about to start doing things in this earth and he's going to share the treasures from the heavens and the rich richness of his wisdom for those who are prepared and those who are seeking him and those who have oil in their lamps and many of you on this channel have been seeking him with me and through these messages and through your time in the word and your time in prayer and praise and worship and the lord put this series together to bless you and to get you prepared and your mind and your spirit ready for the uncommon and things that you are, you've never seen before because he wants to take you to a higher and another level in your thinking and trusting him. Because Isaiah 55 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so are my ways and my thoughts towards you. And Jeremiah 29 11 also says, um, for I know the plans that I have for you, plans, plural, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. And for those of you who have never seen much of God's goodness in your life, it's always been there, but you've, not, you've never been taught to recognize it, to see it, or you've had so much pain and heartache in your life. The enemy has tried so hard to turn you against him or burn you out or... or destroy your faith because faith is what makes you whole but faith is what pleases God and it's what moves mountains so I'm here just by the uh, admonition and the uh, charge of the Lord to bring your faith back to you to bring strength to you and to let you know that he loves you and he's going to start showing you uncommon ways that he's going to bless you but it's also going to be ways that's going to speak directly to you and only you so you're going to know many of you watching this right now have been saying lord show me if you're there lord if you if you're real bless me or do something that i know that it's you and he's about to show you and he just he just told me to say that it's not even in my notes just like those first two scriptures so again, the title is Water to Wine at a Wedding, the three W's, and we're going to read out of John chapter 2. And this is where Jesus began his ministry. This was his first miracle of his ministry, and honestly, he wasn't ready to do it. It's not that he couldn't do it, but his mom asked him to do it, and he said, Woman, my time hasn't come yet, but he did it anyways so he could do the blessing that he wanted to show people God's glory and where was the first place Jesus did it at was a wedding so this is also a kingdom spouse marriage message and it's here to encourage you that the tide is about to turn for your marriage the person God has for you the renewed person God has for you your weddings your vows he wants you to uh, he's going to visit your even your wedding vows too. He's going to show you some things. This is what he was telling me before I got on the camera. Oh, excuse me. All right, water to wine. So we're going to read John chapter 2, verses 1 through 12, and I'm going to be in the New King James Version. <clears throat> on the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Now both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. And when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. Well, he discerned she was asking him to do something. <clears throat> You're going to do what your mama tells you to do. <laughs> Jesus said to her, Woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. In other words, my hour to start walking in the, the anointing and the glory. He's been teaching his disciples and teaching people, but now to show his miracles. But he still did it at a wedding. God did it at a wedding. 
and his mother, it didn't say his mother went, oh, okay. Immediately, his mother just looked at his servants and said, whatever he says to you, do it. Because she knew her son was the son of God and he could perform a miracle. Now, that's a word right there to all of us. Whatever the Lord says to you to do, do it. Remember, we were talking about the ram in the bush yesterday and how God, um, Abraham did exactly what God told him to do. The next morning, he got up, he got everything ready for a sacrifice. He didn't question it. He'd say, Lord, not my son. He just did what the Lord says to do. So here's another word, uh, verse 5 in um, John chapter 2, verse 5. Whatever he says to you, do it. Now, there were set... There. Now there were sitting there six water pots of stone, according to the manner of purification of the Jews, containing twenty or thirty gallons each. Jesus said to them, Fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, Draw some out now and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it, and today it could be the wedding planner, or it could be the char whoever's in charge of the wedding, or it could be the parents of the bride and groom. And they took it when the master of the feast had tasted the water that was made to wine and did not know where it came from. But the servants who had drawn the water knew where it came from. The master of the feast called the bridegroom, Jesus, and he said to him, Every man at the beginning sets out the good wine, and when the guests have well drunk, or they're drunk, then the inferior, in other words, you're going to give the best, and they're going to get intoxicated, so then you're going to give the inferior so they don't really know what they're drinking. You have kept the good wine until now. And what, what I, when I read that, the Lord said to me, um, Matthew 20, 16, So the last shall be first, and the first last, for many are called, but few are chosen. That's one thing I've been hearing the Lord say for weeks. I'm saving the best best for last. I'm saving the best for last. This is why this video was the last in the series. The Lord gave me the order of each one. I was going to do this one last night. And he said, no, I want you to do the ram in the bush. And the wedding is going to be the final one. And that's going to tell them to get ready for what the miracle I'm about to do in their marriage, their wedding, their vows. Um... Again, he said to him, every man at the beginning sets out the good wine, and when the guests have well gotten well drunk, or well drunk, then the inferior wine. You have kept the good wine until the la till now. The Lord is saving the best for last in your life, in my life, and anybody watching this video. Because sometimes it's, we want it right away, we want it to happen just now, but there's so many things that God wants to put in us and prune out of us. It's kind of like wanting a baby to be born before the nine months are up. It's not going to, it either won't make it or it's going to be sickly. So you have to wait for God's timing. And he said, the first shall be last. Again, Matthew 20, 16. So the last shall be first and the first last. For many are called, but few are chosen. Those of you that's been waiting on the Lord and you've been suffering in silence, and your flesh has been dying, but you've been getting stronger in the Lord. That was his main goal, was to get you stronger in him. Because when you go into a marriage, a godly marriage, it's a kingdom assignment. And there's times you're going to take hits and you're going to be in battles. And it's going to be a new season and a new realm you're going to be in. So the Lord has been preparing you for that. But not only that, for the joy and the love and how to respect one another and teach, you know, treat each other as a son and a daughter of God. Just remember that when you when you get married, sometimes we forget that is a son or a daughter of the Lord, but it's also someone else's son or daughter. So think of how you would want your son or daughter to be respected and loved and treated. So, um, verse eleven: This beginning of this was the beginning of signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee, and manifested His glory, and His disciples believed in Him. Again, God is going to do things to show you his glory and that he hasn't forgotten you, but he's also going to do things to prove you out. Again, this made the disciples believe Jesus in him more. Not that they didn't because they believed him as soon as he said, let down your nets for another haul. And then he said, you know, go ahead and leave your boats and follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. They immediately left him, left and went with him. Just like Elisha went with Elijah as soon as he called him. 
first he said, well, let me go tell my mom and dad I got to go. And, he, and Elijah said, let the dead bury the dead. Come and follow me. He was saying, come and follow the Lord. It was another sign of come follow Jesus. So this is the day there's there we got to cut out any compromise any hem hawing around any lukewarmness because the time is shorter and shorter and many are called and few are chosen and the lord needs people who, who will give their yes <clears throat> and not think twice about it and do it in love and as you give him your yes he will teach you he will lead you he will guide you and his way is peace his yoke is easy and his burden is light you don't have to know everything you don't have to figure everything out. You don't have to know 20 books of the Bible, but get in the Word and read it and get to know Him. And when the time comes, He'll give you He'll give you a scripture or He'll tell you a chapter to go share with someone. You just um, this is just what I'm seeing. But what He said to me was, God is going to perform a miracle for your wedding. First, if you're single and waiting, bring your kingdom spouse to you. Some of you have have even emailed me and said, it looks impossible. I thought they were the one. They might not be the one, but someone is. Or a the, the person you thought it was will come as a renewed uh, believer in Christ. God just wants you to focus on Him right now and not worry about what they're doing. And yes, our flesh, we want to be loved. We want to love. We want to, you know, have a home and go do fun things. But... Your relationship with Christ has to be first and has to be the strongest. If your relationship with each other is stronger than your relationship with Christ, the marriage is going to start getting weak because it gets more in the flesh. So you got to walk in the spirit. And that's what he's been doing. He's been birthing many things in your spirit and breaking off the old, uh, kind of like the potter's clay, the old uh, vases and the ceramic pieces and the old wine skins. And he's been creating new, beautiful creations. Trust me, I know. I've been going through things, and I've been through it myself, and I've been through a lot of this by myself. I didn't have channels to go to when all this started. I, I just had the Word, and I had the Holy Spirit. And, you know, I had a few mentors here and there, but for the most part, I've done everything on my own with the Lord. And that is really a great place to be is just you and Christ. It's, it, that's why you need to have a sanctuary or, a, you know, a prayer closet or some space you go to, whether it's in your home or you know, your favorite park and just spend with God or sit in the tub and listen to praise music. God is calling us back to, into the inner courts, into the inner sanctuary with him. Because that represents, your wedding should represent, you know, like your like the, the word says, the marriage is honorable and the bed is undefiled. That represents intimacy with God and it represents the inner sanctuary with the Lord. You know, you had the outer court the inner court and the, um, the middle court and then the very inner court where this only the high priest could go and the high priest in your marriage is your husband he's the head of the home and he should lead you to the altar before he leads you to the bedroom so um, and that's where intimacy with God is and the uh, love and the sex act is a gift from God to married people and that's where it's holy and that's where the Lord can move through both of you and speak to you about his love and show you how much his passion is for the world um, so what he said to me is God is going to perform a miracle for you first by bringing your kingdom spouse to you whoever he or she is just keep waiting and keep believing for it just keep saying Lord I thank you for sending them He's going to do a miracle at your wedding if it's already planned. And this, again, will go for every person. And the miracle he said to me was, if you are engaged and you don't have money for a wedding or for a wedding license or for a dress, you know, God's going, Jesus is going to intervene and perform a miracle for you for your wedding. When it's of the Lord, God, Jesus takes care of everything that his name is on. He's going to perform a miracle for you, so don't worry. I know, that, I feel there's some people that they want to get married, but they can't because they don't have money, or they're even not getting a blessing from the parents. And that is so important to have your parents' blessing because the parents know they've already been through it, they've seen it, and they, they can read people. You're, you know, I have a, mo a mother's eyes too, and I just understand, and I can see it, and I have a spiritual mom's eyes. So when people come to me for counseling or they used to come to me and Jeff, 
I would look at them and I, God would show me the truth about both of the people. And that's kind of like what I said that one night. Could you imagine yourself with this person the next 40 or 50 years? And if you have any hesitations, then ask why. Ask why are you marrying them? But the ones that God has ordained, he is providing what you need. And he's going to give you a beautiful wedding. So don't you worry about that. Those of you that are already married, what he said to me, he said, I'm going to go. And I, I just had a vision. He said, Kathy, I'm going to go to their wedding vows. Kind of like the day you said your wedding vows. And I'm going to refresh that. Because some of you started out on the wrong foot. Or maybe when you got married, you didn't know the Lord. Or... It was a shotgun wedding or maybe you were so young and you didn't have some of the knowledge and wisdom you have now or maybe you just had a distorted view of marriage by what you saw your parents go through maybe there was a lot of fighting or abuse or drugs or witchcraft the Lord said I'm gonna go to the beginning of your marriage and he's going to heal it's basically your starting point even though you've committed it to the Lord it's kind of like where he says, I will renew your youth daily like the eagles, and he restores our lost childhood. It's like God is going to restore what's been lost. Hallelujah. Mm. Ooh, that just went through me. He's going to restore what was lost in your marriage in the very beginning, like, like the tricks and the curses the enemy threw at you when you first took your vows. And I see many of you are going to renew your vows you're going to have a new wedding like you never had. There's people today that are having weddings that never had a wedding. And girl, go get you that dress. Or, or sir, brother, dude, go get you that tux. Whatever you want to do, when the Lord comes to you and visits your home and gives you the money, you're going to know because you're going to know Jesus is going to be right there. But he's putting everything together. And the, the water... You know, when Jesus turned the water into wine, you know, and I did some research. They say water represents humanity because we are born of the water when the mother's water breaks. But what the Lord said to me and what I've always been taught is the, the water represents the Holy Spirit. The wine, and we know this from taking communion every Tuesday night, which we're going to do tomorrow night on the 24th. The wine represents the covenant of the Last Supper that Jesus took with his disciples before he was crucified. It was a covenant. That's why we take communion. He said, do this in remembrance of me. So it's a covenant of the last supper and the marriage supper of the lamb. When we are together with Christ in heaven at this big wedding feast, this big wedding banquet, t table for miles. And Jesus said in Matthew 26, I will not drink of the fruit of this vine, which is wine, until I am with you again in the kingdom of heaven. Um, and even after you get married, if, you, if you're about to get married or you're planning, the Lord is going to help you plan and he's going to visit marriages is what he told me. And he's going to restore and he's going to heal and he's going to break down demonic strongholds and curses and stubbornness and pride. So for those of you that feel like I'm about ready to just throw in the towel, Lord. Don't throw in the towel. Just wipe your face and give, throw your towel to the Lord in praise. I'm going to show you. You know, you ever heard of a praise offering? In the biblical times, they did a Thanksgiving offering. They did a wave offering. They did a heave offering. Like if you got a flag, that's just thanking the Lord. Lord, we just praise you. We just thank you. I see it in churches where they're waving. It's giving God a wave and a thanks offering. People with flags, you know. I'm looking for flags. I'm going to take some to church and anywhere I'm just I might just hang it out the window when I'm driving down the road and just waving it <laughs> just thanking God for what he's about to do in all of our lives because you know that is a blessing marriage represents Jesus's relationship to his bride our marriage should reflect that not cussing and fighting and beating each other up and threatening to divorce each other every 10 minutes and fighting in front of the kids that's all from the kingdom of darkness and if you've been doing that today is good news today is your day of salvation to repent to get saved to give your hearts and your marriages to the lord because it's not too late for you and i'm even seeing some divorce papers that's already been signed and the devil is a liar those of you that are not to, to go that route, the papers are going to be torn up in the name of Jesus. Um, it's, he said, after your wedding, if you're already married, you need a miracle and continue working on it. 
He said, continue working on it. And he's going to continue to work on it as long as you give it to him. Because he said, in the last days would be like the days of Noah. And there would be a lot of people getting married, given in marriage. Yours is your kingdom assignment. So anytime something goes on and you have a disagreement, get you a paper towel or a washcloth. <laughs> give the Lord a wave offering or just lift your hand and say, Lord, I commit this to you. And um, the Bible says, don't let the sun go down upon your wrath. In other words, don't go to bed angry. If you have to stay up till three in the morning to talk it out, or I don't say duke it out, but, you know, talk it out. And uh, those of you I'm seeing right now in the spirit, those of you that are sleeping on the couch, it's time for that to stop because that's where the devil's getting a wedge in between you. Go back to your bedroom. If you don't want to, just say, Lord, help me do it. If he tells you to stay on the couch, that's fine. But there's some people he's been telling you to go get back in your bedroom and forgive. Um, because what you're doing, your decisions, I'm going to do a video on this about how our decisions affect many, not just us, but it affects our generations. Some of us, Many of us are walking under things that the generations ahead of us left on us like generational curses and I just command those curses to be broken off of you and your seed after you and we ask the Lord to draw the blood of Jesus between us and the the generations that are no longer here God bless them forgive them their sins and give us a new beginning cover us in your blood Jesus the other thing okay thank you Lord the other thing he um, he keeps pointing out to me is you know, there's been a discrepancy or people have said to me, well, is it wrong to drink? I am no one's judge because I think they did drink wine in the Bible. But when you're walking in the spirit of the Lord and you're being used of God, no. Because our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says, don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the spirit. And it's Ephesians 5, 18. Do not get drunk or... Um, or with wine, which leads to debauchery. And debauchery is basically perversion, um, a wild life. Because, you know, when you get drunk, you kind of lose your senses, and that's where the devil gets in. You know, alcohol is a drug, just like drugs are. So, and I know some people are drinking to numb pain, to not think about things, but the Lord is coming on you right now if you receive this, and he's healing you and delivering you. I pray you take the taste right out of their mouth, Lord. Because it's not only causing your body harm, your liver harm, it's affecting your family. Your children are watching it. They're crying. They're praying for you. But it's also taking a lot out of your income or you're going in debt for it. And that's not the Lord because debt is a bondage. So do not get drunk with wine or anything which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. If you need help with that, just say, Lord, deliver me from this, this stronghold of drinking. Trust me, I know back in the day I had my time, and God delivered me from it. So, uh, Proverbs 21, wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived, you're deceived by it, is not wise. I was deceived by it at one time in my life. I was doing it because I was trying to numb pain. I was alone because my dad had died and my mom was gone a lot. But, I, but at one time I thought it was the cool thing to do. But I, I saw people lose their lives because of it. And I'm so thankful that God spared me from a very bad car accident years ago when I was in high school. That Me and a friend, went, we drove to another town and we were drinking and we should have died. The car even spun 360 degrees in the middle of the road. And it was like the Lord just put his hand on that car stopped it because I, I didn't know the call on my life then. Uh, you know, I was like 19 or 20. And my mom said, Kathy, every time you got in the car with her, I would pray until you come back home because of the way she drove. And she was, you know, what they called a rich kid. And her daddy got her a new car. And it was a Trans Am at the time. It was very expensive. But just be careful, you know, what you, who you get in the car with, who you let your kids, I'm feeling to tell you this, who you let your kids in the car go off with. Uh, I was very, uh, my mother was very protective of me, and I'm so grateful for her prayers and for the prayers, the goodness of the Lord who kept his hand on me so I could be walking in this ministry today. So, 
those of you who are waiting on a miracle in your wedding, well, Jesus performed his first miracle at a wedding, the wedding in Cana, and his mother knew he could do it, and she believed in him. So I'm believing the Lord to do miracles in your life as a, as a Christian spiritual mom, to do the work for you, for me, to my friends, to my brothers and sisters in the Lord. The Lord loves you. And he said, the first will be last and the last will be first. So he hasn't forgotten you. And what he, he's telling me again to tell you, I'm saving the best for last. So just wait for his best. What is it in those who weigh Isaiah 40, 31, 40 verse 31, those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Your strength is being renewed for your fight, for your stand. The battle you've been going through in your home. Your, the battle, you know, they've went off and left you so many times crying, brokenhearted. God is going to bring peace to you. Peace to your home. Peace to your, your situation. And he's going to put the right person in your life. But you got to let go of, he's telling me right now, you got to let go of the wrong ones. This is the ram in the bush you got to sacrifice. You know this person is not who God has called you to be. Oh, but, but he goes to church and his daddy's a preacher. That doesn't mean he's walking with the Lord. You got to look at your future assignment. You got to look at your children, your grandkids, and all the people in your sphere of influence. Not that, no, you don't have to care about what people think, but in a way, what your choices are are going to affect people. Think about you get into a bad relationship and it's toxic and they're abusing you. And your mom and daddy's up at night crying or your sister has to come get you and then their kids are upset because their mom and dad's leaving the house see how it's like a pebble in the pond so that's why it's important to wait on the lord you know we all have to walk our walk and i get that but when there's warnings and sound wisdom you should listen to them from a prophet of the lord who loves you wait on god wait till the end wait for him because the first shall be last and the last shall be first Late, put your put your um put on the altar your Isaac, whoever or whatever it is. It might be drinking, it might be um, an addiction, it could be it could be pride, it could be um, an affair, it could be money, whatever your Isaac is, God is saying, put it on the altar. Hey Lord, any I have, I put it on the altar, even if I don't know it. Because I don't want anything hindering me from receiving the best that God has for me. Amen? So, do that. Put your Isaac on the altar and watch your ram in the bush show up. And he loves you so much, and so do I. And I just can't wait to hear the, the testimonies, the good reports. I'm seeing so many of you going through trials and you're struggling. And you're telling me, you know, many have said their husbands have left them. They're with... They're with a Jezebel or, or you know, the, I, I see a spirit of witchcraft. But the devil is a liar and all that witchcraft, that voodoo, lust, hexes, love spells, even people using blood. I find that. That's disgusting in the name of Jesus. Satan, you're a nasty pervert and you get your hands off these marriages in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. And I'm seeing somebody's got some crystals in your bedroom they're like laying on a ledge or laying on a shelf and they're like pink and purple someone gave these to you or encouraged you to get crystals that it would it would bring good good luck to you or it would bring the right person that is witchcraft and that will bring demons in your room and it'll bring demons in your house and you may maybe you didn't know this but your spirit keeps telling you and i pray that you would just get rid of them and throw them away and anoint your bedroom with oil and repent then that's that's your isaac you're getting too involved in new age and that's not christ stay on the word you know the truth whoever you are and i want to give you and anybody an opportunity to have the greatest marriage you can and that's to the lover of our souls our first love jesus christ because he loved us before we first loved him that's the greatest love when, when you find out somebody's, have you ever found out someone was in love with you and you didn't even know it and they watched over you and they protected you? Maybe they left you secret gifts or a secret admirer. You know, when, when you're in high school, it's called like a secret admirer or a secret pen pal. You know what that does to your heart? Well, you've had a, you've had a secret admirer 
before you were even born. His name's Jesus Christ. And he's watching over you right now. So if you have never been saved, born again, washed in the blood, then this is your time. And the reason why we all must repent of sin and be born again was because of Adam and Eve when they fell in the garden. You know, Eve was deceived, but Adam disobeyed God because God told them, do not eat of the tree of the, you know, the fruit of the tree of good and evil. People say it's an apple. I don't think it was an apple. I think it was something that was forbidden. He said the knowledge of good and evil. Some people have told me they think it's sex, like sex before marriage and things like that. But whatever it is, the Lord's, you know, he, he disobeyed God, but God was still merciful. The glory lifted off of them and then they saw their nakedness. They had to leave that perfect garden. That's why women have pain in childbirth and you have to go out and work hard, three jobs. But Jesus came to redeem us and he's called the second Adam as well as the son of God. He's the son of God. He's the son of David. Bright morning star, the mighty, you know, the everlasting. He's the, he's the prince of peace. That's one of my favorite names. He's the prince of peace. He's the lion of the tribe of Judah. And Jesus wants to come into your heart and your life and he wants to save you and he wants to marry you first because he is the bridegroom and his children are the bride. We are, the church is the bride. The church is not a building. It's people made without hands. So Romans 10, 9 through 13, I'm going to read the first few scriptures. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart, we man and woman believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. And when God says man in the Bible, he means man and woman, because woman was created out of man. It used to be just Adam, man, but a woman is a man with a womb, so woman. We're women, but we were made out of, you know, Adam's rib. That's how he made Eve. So... I want you if you if this is what you want I want you to repeat this prayer after me and then you will be justified not only before God because the robe of righteousness the blood of Jesus will be on you but you will be justified to Satan and his reign over you his hold over you will be broken so close your eyes and get ready to enter the most amazing decision and place in your life the most amazing love you will ever know thank you father Lord, I pray for everyone praying this prayer or who has prayed it before. That you would just draw them close to you right now. I bind any attack against them. And I plead the blood of Jesus and the fire of God around them. So pray this prayer right now. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of all my sins. I repent. Come in my heart and my life and save me. Wash me in your blood. And make me clean I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that you are the Son of God you died on the cross for my sins and I believe God raised you from the dead for my justification and Lord Jesus fill me with your Holy Spirit and baptize me in your fire I make you the Lord of my life, and I surrender my heart, my will, my mind, and my body to you. In Jesus' name, amen. That beautiful light that you're seeing, that warmth that you're feeling, that is the Holy Spirit coming on you. You are now, if you prayed that prayer, you are now filled with the Spirit of God. He is living inside of you. Jesus is in you now. And your next step after this is to, to uh, for your full confession of faith is water baptism. Now you have accepted Christ. And if you did, I want you to put a three in the comments if you gave your heart to Jesus or you recommitted your life. And that three stands for Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So your next step is to get water baptized because Jesus was baptized. And then he told us, go into all the world and preach the gospel and baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's Matthew 28, 19. And what, what water baptism is, you go down in the water, the old person, 
the old man, the old woman, and you come up a new creation. There's healing, there's deliverance in the water, there's there's freedom and there's peace. And then you you know you're washed. It's like the old wine skins are washed away. So right now, those of you that prayed this, the angels in heaven are having a party over you. They are throwing a shindig and they're they are calling your name, and your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So if this is for you, again, put a three in the comments so I will see it, and I will, you know, congratulate and shout hallelujah with you, and I will pray for you. If you need anything, like a Bible, or you need, you know, further, you know, to talk, or you need some instructions, or just someone to just talk to, you can email me at sl5373 at yahoo.com. That stands for Salt and Light, SL5373 at yahoo.com. Also, if this word bears witness with you or resonates with you, I want you to put in the comments, um, water to wine or wedding. Water to wine or wedding. If you are ready for the Lord to either bring or restore your kingdom husband or wife, and no kingdom spouse is not in the Bible, but it, when they're chosen by God, they're they're believers and they are born again into the kingdom of heaven. Like Ruth and Boaz, that was always the name of our singles ministry, was Ruth and Boaz Ministries, and I still use it. So um, if you're ready for that, and or you're ready for the Lord to do a new work in your marriage or to restore I just see the Lord is just going to go bring people and he's going to let blinders fall off. Some of you, he's going to bring you a new person because this person, it's like I was telling a subscriber, the, I, I, your subscribers, but I call also call you family members here. I was telling them, this is what the Lord showed me. The reason why it didn't work with these other people was because each of us are like a, a puzzle or a piece in the kingdom where he said, Every joint will supply, you know, we fit rightly together. So we're all like a puzzle piece. And there's only a certain spot when you, if you've ever put together a puzzle, there's only one place where each puzzle piece belongs. And you belong with your puzzle piece. Some people, uh, men will pray and say, Lord, where is my rib? You know, or my love bone. So we can't fit and, you know, we, we might be round, but we can't fit into a square, you know, hole. I know there's some games out there, but you're going to, God's going to fit you with your puzzle piece. So I just say, Lord, bring the puzzle pieces. And if it didn't fit, it's because that's why it didn't work out. And, you know, that person has a different vision and has a different calling and assignment with someone else, even if it hurts, you know, because the Lord's put different gifts and talents in each one of us. And he's called us for a reason. And if you and thank you, Holy Spirit, He's saying if you feel you've I've married the wrong person, I'm unequally yoked. You are married then. You are married now. And if you're a believer and they're not, they are sanctified through you as well as your children. So keep standing and believing for their salvation. Don't leave them. That's not biblical. The only time you can leave an unbeliever is if they leave and abandon you, or if they commit adultery. And even in that, you could still forgive them if you wanted to work it out. But if I, you know, I would just have to let the Holy Spirit lead me in that. So just stand with them, pray for them, let me know. I'll pray in agreement for their salvation. I, I knew a lady down in South Florida, anointed pre preacher and minister, a prophet, and she was married to a non believer. She got saved and he didn't. I think he did. He just was quiet towards the, you know, towards the end he did. But every night she'd go hold revivals and conferences, and then she'd go home to her husband, but she was faithful to him. And she loved him and honored him as the head of their house. And that's a sign of faith, and that's a sign of respecting the Lord and what his word says. And if it's not going to work out or they're not treating you right, God will visit them, and he'll either change them or he'll deliver you. So great things are coming. So welcome to the family, the new believers. I also want to welcome all of um, my returning and new subscribers. Welcome. It's so good to have you in the family with the Salt and Light channel. And I also want to welcome all of our new channel members. We just since last week, we've had 21 new channel members. And I also want to bless you, all of you who have sowed seeds into this ministry through Cash App, Venmo, Super Things, Super Chat. God bless you all abundantly. Uh, thank you for all the cards I get, the letters. You guys are wonderful. 
if you feel led to sow into this ministry by the Holy Spirit, the description of ways to sow is in, um, the ways to sow is in the description of the video, and you just click the word more, and then you'll see everything drop down. And um, I just want to thank all of you and all of my prayer partners, all of you that encourage me, those of you that like and comment and share the videos. I get so many, good morning, Kathy, or I wanted you to know I love you, I appreciate you. Somebody today said, I just love you and I love your ministry. I love you too. And thank you for being here because you were drawn here by the Holy Spirit. Um, if you'd like to be a subscriber and receive more videos and more, be a part of our live streams, which tomorrow we have one on Tuesday the 24th at 7.30. And we will be taking communion tomorrow night. So bring your, you can bring a cracker and a little juice or a pinch of bread and some water. And everyone is welcome to join us. You, you can even bring your family in on it. And just everybody sit in front of the TV and we'll take communion together. So that's 7.30 Eastern Standard Time. I'm on the East Coast. I'm in Florida. Um, so welcome channel members. So if you'd like to subscribe, hit the bell icon on the right side of the screen and just click the word all and all of my videos, you'll get notifications. And if you will hit the little thumbs up on the left side of the screen. And that will get this video into the YouTube algorithm, and it will help more people find Christ. It'll help more people find deliverance. If you feel led to sow this or to send this video, excuse me, I'm sorry. If you feel led to send this video to someone and God is putting them on your heart, please share. Thank you for sharing. That's another way to keep this ministry growing. We're getting close to uh, 1900, soon be 2K. Woohoo! Those are souls to me. Those are. Um, people that the Lord cares for. So I pray for you and I bless you and I thank you for all my prayer partners and those who sow to the ministry, those who like, share, comment. And um, if you'd like to be a channel member, and basically what a channel member does is they sign up to sow monthly into the ministry and it starts at 99 cents. Jesus left the 99 to go after the one. It's, that's the first level of faith and I, I don't exactly know how they do it, but I do know it's something you have to set up. But it's basically a seed, and the membership is a processor. But you, I, I pray for the members as well as you know the subs, because you have to be a sub first. So <laughs> I think you do. I'm not sure. But it's free to be a subscriber. It doesn't cost anything. And there's like 312 videos of teaching on there. So I welcome you to listen to them and just grow in your spirit. So if you want to be a channel member, look for the pictures of members. It'll say thanks members or thanks channel members. And to the right, there's the word join. Some said they have to go to a desktop and can't use their phone or a laptop. Or they go directly to the YouTube channel and pull up Kathy D. Salt and Light. And so just whatever the Lord leads you. But either way, I thank you and I love you all. So I will see you all in the next video and I will see you on tomorrow night's live stream. So have a good night. I'm praying for you. God bless.